three, two, one, go! Microscopic city. One, two, checkity check, checkity check. My name is Anthony Porter with the Eureka McConnell Science Museum, and join me today on an adventure to figure out what is soil swelling, what we can do about it, and why does it affect so much of our daily lives here in Colorado. Let's go on an adventure. Follow me. Something really special about Colorado is that we have both very dry seasons and extremely wet seasons. Our soil has to really make sure that it can get all of that moisture out and all of that moisture available like a sponge. When I got there, I poured some water on the mud to see what happened. I expected it to roll off just a little bit due to that crusty outer surface, but instead it absorbed it immediately, filling in all those cracks. Now, soil swelling is a completely natural phenomenon. Out here, it's not really a big issue. If you look around, there's a lot of vegetation. And so what this vegetation does is it regulates the amount of moisture in the soil. And it helps limit the erosion. The top layer of clay that we see is going to be the most dry because it is the most exposed to the sun and to the wind. I wanted to test to see how long it takes for the water to evaporate from the clay. It took less than two minutes for the clay to absorb the water and then expel it, leaving that condensation on the inside of the flask. It also left the flask disgusting and full of mud. Now for soil expansion, one of the key terms today is going to be an aggregate. So each time that the soil cracks, there is an isolated part of the soil that is called an aggregate. Now, if you're curious how water expands an object, we can do a little experiment at home. All you need is a straw with a wrapper on it and a cup of water. Now, first we wanna take the wrapper off of the straw by crushing it down so it's wrinkled on top of each other. Perfect. The way that this is all wrinkled up is going to represent our dry soil. And now what you need to do is just get your straw, put your finger over the top and grab one little drop of water. Now we're going to add moisture to our straw wrapper. That is so cool. So now how does this happen with clay in the outdoors? So clay is made up of a bunch of small clay particles. And when they're all dry, they're all very close to each other. Particles. So when it rains or when it floods, the water is attracted to these clay particles, giving them these nice, beautiful barriers. But what happens when the sun dries out the soil again? Well, now there's a lot of space in between these clay particles, and they want to shrink back down to size. What happens is that these clay particles want to group back up together, but they can't. So they end up forming these large cracks in between these particle lines. Now you might be wondering, does soil swelling happen with all minerals? The answer is no. It depends on the porosity. Now the porosity is the amount of free space in between the particles of an object. Here on our clay, there's a lot of pore space in between the particles, but quartz is extremely dense, which means there's not a lot of space for air inside of it. Now when I pour water onto each of these, it depends on the porosity of how much it's going to absorb. So what do you think is going to absorb more water? Let's find out. and our minerals are off to the races. Some aggregates of clay versus some chunks of quartz. While we wait a couple of minutes for those to absorb, let's go back and talk a little bit about porosity. So when we're measuring porosity when it comes to minerals, we measure it in terms of grams per cubic centimeter. Now for porosity, most minerals fall in between one and 1.6 grams per cubic centimeter, but quartz is gonna be hanging out over by 2.6. 
Now our friends Mud and Clay are going to be hanging out underneath one at around 0.6 to 0.7. So now that we talked about porosity, let's go back to our rocks to see how much they actually absorbed. Looks like it absorbed virtually nothing. And our friends over here, looks like they are turning into sludge. So once again, our quartz are gonna be very non-porous and our clay is gonna be very porous. Porosity. In Colorado, 90% of the human population lives in areas that experience soil swelling. Huh, but why does that matter to us? Well, because we lay our foundations of our houses, our buildings, and our roads on top of this kind of soil. Now, your house may not fall into the ground, but after a few years of the house settling in, you may experience a lot of problems. So, I enlisted the help of a fellow instructor named Nick, and together we went out into the environment to see if nature had any answers for us, and we ended up finding something pretty cool. One thing that helps minimize soil erosion in the outdoors is something called cryptobiotic soil. What is cryptobiotic soil? Cryptobiotic soil is a mixture of three things, lichen, bacteria, and fungus. And together they live inside of these soil structures that they created for themselves. It's like a microscopic city. Wow. Organisms inside cryptobiotic soil use water so it actually limits soil swelling. Unfortunately, a single step from a shoe could kill thousands of organisms living inside. Also, it needs constant sunlight to live, making it not quite so suitable for construction. But pretty cool stuff, right? Now let's talk about a few things that we can do at home to prevent soil swelling damage. The first one is drainage. We want to make sure that all the gutter water and rainwater discharge away from the foundations of the house to prevent sinking and swelling. And number two, a way to stabilize the soil itself is having a consistent vegetative ground cover. Just make sure you're being water wise. Multiple companies have dedicated themselves to fixing this issue where the soil swelling affects foundations of buildings and homes. They use a process called mud jacking where they inject concrete foam into the earth to stabilize the concrete from underneath. However, these solutions may not last forever. People are constantly looking for new ways to minimize soil swelling in their area. So, we showed you the science. Above all else, we encourage you to be curious. We encourage you to go out there and find new solutions for existing problems. We had so much fun exploring and sharing our experiences and experiments with you all today. Join us next time at the Eureka McConnell Science Museum for more adventures.